morning. I'd like to welcome you to the Sunday school class here at St. Matthew's Baptist Church. This morning we are going to be talking about God's condemnation, but it could be God's condemnation as well. Uh, and that's going to be in the first book of Corinthians, 4th chapter 1, verses 1 through 6 and 17 through 25. We're going to turn you back over to our music ministry, and then we'll come back to the word from the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. With us to page 362, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Oh, how I love Jesus. If you would stand with us to sing, oh, how I love Jesus. judgment of Christ's servant is not committed to men. And uh, before we get into the lesson, let's offer up a word of praise. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning having made the safe journey. We take it not for granted, Lord, that we come before you now just to say thank you for your many blessings. Yes, yes. Thy help allowed me to be able to have the movement of my limbs and to be able to address myself and even to drive this yeah. distance. Yeah. Gratefully, my whole help me, Father, that you have shown me such favor. Yeah. Now, Lord, I ask you to purge me all of anything that would keep me from rendering the service unto you that I might speak yeah. only what thus says the Lord. In Christ's yeah. name, I pray these and all yeah. blessings. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. The first verse here says, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, we have a, a real life court system today and one thing is often crucial in any time that you actually have to stand before the bar of judgment. Yeah. They collect, they investigate, they collect yeah, yeah. all sorts of facts because yeah. if you don't get the facts, then what's the basis for the judgment? So this morning we find that there's a different kind of perspective with the Greeks. They, uh, they think little of people that work with their hands, the people that what I would say people refer to as the south of the earth, they look down on. And so they, here this morning, they have an attitude toward Paul because there was a division in the church as recorded in the previous chapter with Paul yeah, yeah. and Apollos. So here we say, let a man give account of us yeah. as of the ministers of Christ. You see, we, we have a responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And we report to somebody, so that's important that right. we understand. It's just not those who wear the title of ministers and pastors. Right. Right. But every believer that calls on the name of Jesus Christ is a preacher. Yeah. How is it that you can preach? Well, we all live, do we not? Yes. Your lifestyle sends out a message. Amen. You live here today, you look fine and you talk fine and you worship, 
but what kind of lifestyle goes on from Monday through Saturday? It tells a message. Is it the message of Christ or is it the message of the world? Which is it? And so therefore, if you're going to look at a situation, you need to have all of the facts. I don't know about you, but I don't have all the facts about your life. I don't know everything that's in your heart, your desires, your motives. I don't know that. So we need to be careful about how we judge one another. Some of us are equipped to handle certain types of words and a vocabulary to, to go along with that. But there are others that may be babes in Christ, and they are just getting along, growing in the nurturing of God. So we have to be mindful of that, that just because I'm sitting alongside you don't mean that I'm walking at the same pace that you are with Christ. I may be still stumbling and falling, and you learn to stand up. So be careful about that. Why is that so important? Because in this lesson, we're required to be good stewards. Yeah. What, are we, what are we keeping? He said the, the, the good steward is, is the word of God. Yeah. We are responsible to get the word out. I, Matthew says we should go forth. He didn't say just pastors and ministers and prophets yeah. and evangelists. He said all was to go forth. Now, if you're going to go forth, you need to be well endured and stocked up with the facts. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but it's hard to collect spiritual facts if, you, if you're fighting a warfare in the flesh all the time. Yeah. What I'm saying, there's carnal nature and there's a spiritual nature. Right. And the problem is, there's a tendency to lean more on that side because you've sort of been accustomed to that. Yeah. See, you're growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, but you're going to fall down. And when you fall down you will say and do things that's embarrassing, quite honestly. Because you've committed your life to Christ and you say, Lord, wash me, clean me up, put me back on. Put me back on the road again because I've fallen off. So in this morning, we see that there's a division. And division in the church can create a problem primarily because there are different stages of growth of various Christians within the body. And so someone has got all of a sudden got preoccupied that he is not understood and he's got the gift of what he's received because he didn't get any, he didn't do anything on his own that he did not receive from Christ. Yeah. So we need to be mindful of that. What you have has been given to you by Christ. Amen. But you have to be careful about not understanding where somebody is in their Christian walk. Yeah. We don't all we are all mature Christians. I don't know, and just age is not a measure of, of your growth as a Christian. When you came to Christ, you might have been 40, 50, 30, I, I don't know, but I tell you what, if you don't work, if you don't spend time going to class, you don't grow. It takes the guiding of the Holy Spirit to teach you these truths that you need. Even in that, you won't know it all. You won't have enough to sufficiently look at somebody and say, that's a horrible person. So we need to be very careful about that. But what you do need to be able to do is be a good steward of the gospel. If you're going to be a good steward of the gospel, you must know the gospel. For when Paul, I mean, when Matthew, I think it was Luke, told this parable to his disciples, he asked the question, he says, do y'all understand? Yeah, Lord, we understand. If you don't have an understanding, how can you be effective in giving it out? It's not all the pastors are my responsibility to do that. And if the word is going to be spread throughout the world to every nation, every corner of the world. It's going to take all of us working together to do that. So we would expect, I would expect, Lord would expect that you leave here Sunday, you grab something that sets in your heart that you can take forward to share with somebody that doesn't know Christ. Because you're in an environment in a dark world. I, I don't know, I dare say, that's probably not 100% Christians on your job. They're not 100% Christians in your neighborhood. You'll have a wonderful opportunity to reach out, but 
what is causing you delay to hold back? I would say that you're not comfortable with the verbiage, with the things that are said. Yeah. What I'm saying, you have to put it in your own words. You have to learn and be able to speak in your own words. It may not be exact word for scripture, yeah. but if you get the essence of it, yeah. you can say it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Some of us not going to get these uh, predestination and all the other terms, propitiation and so we not We may not get that. But ask somebody, put, uh, Pastor, can you give me a, can you tell me exactly what that means to me on my level? Yeah. So important. So he says, we are stewards of the mysteries. The mysteries are not some puzzle, but it is to those that are outside of Christ. Yeah. Those who are believers in Christ are the ones who are revealed these mysteries, the mysteries of the, of the gospel. And so we have to be stewards of those mysteries. Yeah. That we have to make known these things to others as well as ourselves. And so here in this morning's lesson, we find that it is required that a steward be found faithful. You don't have to. There are those of us that are, use the word eloquent, if you will, that are more able to verbalize these things in Scripture. But it doesn't require you to be eloquent. It doesn't require you to be well gifted. He just asks you to be faithful. Yeah. Faithful. And however you want to tell somebody, if you know what you know, then let not no one discourage you from what you know. Amen. But have grab a hold of it so you can't let go of it because you know why? Something like Satan will slip in and say something about your character from the past and say, I remember how you were. You can't be the same person now. But you got to hold on to what you know. And the only way you're going to do that, you got to begin to walk it and talk it. It's like learning to walk. The more that you walk by faith, the stronger your faith becomes. Because surely storms in life are going to come. And if you don't know how to walk, you will fall. I tell my kids all the time, storms are going to come. And I fought myself for that. And we didn't teach them about the Lord enough how we were able to make it when times were very different than how they are now for us. Yeah, yeah. Food was tight. Yeah. Clothing was tight. Yeah. Money was tight. We had inconveniences, but yet conveniences because the Lord made a way for us. Yeah, yeah. So we able to be able to teach them. And the only way you're going to do that is to have it here. And he talks about not only teach them, the new stuff, but we're responsible to teaching the old stuff. Because the New Testament formulates so much of the Old Testament, so don't throw aside the Old Testament just thinking you got to be in the new. Amen. Because so many of the, 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 the scriptures are founded and based on things that have come from the Old Testament. Amen. So he says, you must be found faithful. But he says, but with me it's very small things that I should be judged of you or man's judgment. You, yea, I judge not mine own Self and for I know nothing against myself, yet I am not hereby justified. But he that judges me is the Lord. These two verses sort of go together because yeah. as I was reading some of the expositor's notes, he called it there basically, uh, uh, these two verbs encompass three courts yeah. there's a court of lower, lower, there's a lower court, that's the court where. Well, you in my court, or I'm in your court. That's the lower court. The, the next court is, is this court. He says, uh, yet I am not hereby justified. The next court is a court of conscience. Yeah. See, we can say we're guilty or we're not guilty. So the, and, and then there's this final court, this is the Supreme Court. That's the, that's the almighty George's court. Amen. So we see in this morning that this, this mindset about Things that come up, public opinion that people have of one another. Yeah. We have to be so careful about that because we can have itching ears and we listen in. And the next thing you know, it's affect our ability to make a solid review yeah. of someone's character. Yeah. So he says, judge not that you be judged. Right. Got to be careful. We ought to be careful about how we look at other folks. If you could look in my heart and see what only Christ can see, because Jeremiah says, 
he tries the heart and he, he searches the heart and he tries the mind. Yeah. Yeah. So he can see it all and he knows it all. Amen. You can't hide it from him, but I can hide it from you and you can hide it from me. Yeah. You look nice and you talk nice and you talk Christ-like and you talk the right kind of words on Sunday. Yeah. But what do you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday? Yeah. Is it the same? You know, when you play hooky, it shows up. It does show up in your lifestyle because you thought just because I've been saved that you're going to be okay and I don't have to do anything else for the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, you hadn't lost your salvation. But you were expected to live a life that demonstrates you are in the body of Christ. Amen. To you and to us, we may say, that's fine, but somebody in the world is for sure going to confront you. Yeah. How you handle an issue on your job or yeah. something you said or the words you chose to use. Because be mindful that if you receive grace, you've got to be a giver of grace too. Yeah. And so it's hard to see someone when they messed up and they did wrong that we want to chastise them. And, and it's okay, to, but we need to be careful about that because... We're not perfect, and you're not perfect. I don't care how long you've been on the job, and I don't care how long you've been at that. We're not perfect, and we don't get perfect down here. So it says, it says, I know nothing against myself. Even, even, if, even if I judge myself, even if I thought I was doing a decent job, he says, if I was doing a good job, that wouldn't be enough for me to get an acquittal. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I can't give myself an acquittal based on what I think about myself. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Amen. So he says, I'm hereby justified. That means he, he, he declared not guilty to himself. Amen. But the day is coming for the scripture said there's a day appointed for judgment. Christ came to save, but the second time he's coming, he's coming as a judge. Yeah. So we need to be mindful of that, and it's without question in the minds of every believer that he is coming back for yeah. sure. We don't know when, but he's coming. Yeah. And so we need to be mindful how we live during that time. He said, therefore, judge nothing before the time. Until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. Mm -hmm. Then shall every man have praise. Well, be careful because the time has not come yet for judgment. Right, so when we do that, we are anticipating what he may or may not do yeah, yeah. without having full knowledge and facts of what the situation really is. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes they usually used to refer, usually used to refer to half cocked. Because they hadn't fully thought about the situation. Because you don't really know all the facts. Amen. Right. So be careful how we look at one another. Yeah. He said, these things matter in the church. We should never get up caught in pride because we think we know something enough to be able to say something towards someone else. Why? Because somebody is just starting to learn how to get up off of their knees and learn how to walk. Yeah. And they see you all of a sudden and they get discouraged because that becomes a stumbling block that someone else is trying to walk for Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm starting out trying to do my best and you think you already got it turned down. Mm. And so I fall down because I looked at you and it was discouraging. Yeah. 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 Come on. So my walk was shaky. And I wanted you to help steady me while I walked. And I depended on you because, you see, we're members of one body. So when somebody's not able to walk right, the body is shaky. It's not steady because you got a youngster there trying to learn how to walk, and he, he's stumbling, but you, you, and you're way out front trying to, and he's trying to keep up. He can't do it. He needs you to bring him along with side of you. So that he can learn from you how to walk for Christ. Amen. So he says, 
until the Lord comes who both will bring light. Light, he is light, so you, you can't hide from, from what you've done. Yeah. You can't hide from the desires or motive you've had in your life. Yeah. I don't know what they are, but for sure there's one thing. They're going to be lit up. But you know, one thing about God, and I thought about the book of Revelation where he, he called forth the, the seven churches. Yeah, yeah. All of it won't be bad. Right. He's going to praise you for some good things you yeah. did. But he's going to call you on the carpet for the things that you did. Yeah, yeah. So that's encouraging to us to know that. And these things, brethren, you know, when, when Paul uses the word brethren, he's, he comes across a little rough, but he softens it by saying, I'm, I'm in this family here now. We are not brothers. And I'm looking at it from that standpoint, so be mindful that I'm going to recommend what I believe we should do to cure this division within the church. Yeah. And he says, I have in figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that ye might learn and not to think of men above which is written that no one should be puffed up for one against another. Yeah. Don't get caught up because you know a little bit more something than somebody else. Yeah. And you need to be more humble. But you see, they frowned on humility because that was associated with the person who was a slave, the person who worked with their hands because they looked at themselves as up high and the, and the, and the ordinary man who worked with his hands. It was despicable to them. It's a hard lesson to teach somebody when they've already got a mindset that they know what they have in their mindset, and they know that they are right. They feel like they are right in what they are thinking. Yeah. To the point that it's caused a problem. Now, Paul is saying, if you look at the example that Apollos and I have set for you, that's a good example to take on. Learn from that, that example. But how do you force feed someone because Paul apparently was not necessarily there, and so he sends Timothy, and then that only, and you imagine that you have a difficult with somebody from long distance, and, and you send somebody else, and you, they, they get on your case. You dare not to show your face after what you said to us? And you send Timothy? Hot under the collar. And I would imagine you, you might thought that say the same thing somebody else if they said something and, and have the nerve to say it long distance and then you yeah. send somewhere else to sort of yeah. Yeah. smooth it out. Mm. Or you say, I want to see him for myself. Why, why didn't you show up? Yeah. Was an attitude that they had. Yeah. And uh, he said, what is it that, that you have received that you didn't receive from God? So how are you going to get puffed up about anything? Amen. What you've learned and what by the grace of God you have received, don't let it distract you and make you think you're more than somebody else. Yes, and the fact that of the matter that apostles and he talks about it, they work with the hands. Yes, they labor with the hands. And scriptures say he, he takes the foolish things of this world to confine the wise people. So how is it you're going to take a man with no money and put no money in his pocket, don't give him a place to stay, and tell him to hit the road, Jack, get my word out. Don't worry about anything. I'm going to feed you somehow. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to put clothes on you when you need clothes. I don't know, but there's something about this attitude, though of apostles and people that are, seem to be there, God would take somebody seemingly from a lower state and raise them up. It's almost like if you're in the wrong state of mind, you can't be able to take the word of God and use it because 
He has taken some people from, from backgrounds like fishermen. Yes. And Paul, a well-educated man. And adopt me, had some portion of wealth. But yet, God can change any heart. Amen. So we need to be mindful that God is not mocked whatsoever man soweth. That shall also reap. So be careful about your judgment because it might confront you yes. one day. And that yes. they say that they call that the day of the Lord. That is, right now we're in man's day, but there's a day coming. It's called the day of the Lord. And that's when his judgment is going to be. We have to stand before and give account of everything. Not just the things that we think that he's not going to see. But he will see and know it all. And so in he said I have, I have uh, I'm sending Timothy for this call so he can sort of squash this situation so he can bring back unity in the, in the faith. But and he said uh, he's faithful in the Lord. In other words, Timothy is going to do it the way I would do it. Now, so, and, and that's really important because when I was a child, there was a particularity emphasized on the way you did exactly the way you were told to do it. And you taught it, and it may not seem the best way for you, but it was always about being obedient. Amen. It's like blind or be walking by faith because here he says, Timothy is going to teach you just like the ways that, according to the ways that I was. He's not going to be any different. So don't look at me as if some, I'm some oddity because the ways that I'm teaching, that he's teaching, are the ways that I teach everywhere. I'm consistent. In other words, it's not just in Corinth, but it's at Ephesus. It's at Philippi. It's all over. I'm consistent day in, day out. I teach the same thing every place that I go. And Timothy is just like that. Amen. Now, some are puffed up as though I would not come to you now. You know, this is, this is a, how do I call a word? This is a. Paul has a way of knowing how to do, how to say certain things that don't create additional friction. And here he, he is careful not to call anyone by name. He, you know, he knows there are the parties that have been causing the problem. And he undoubtedly knows the names, but it would only add further heartache and pain to call them by name. Those people that have been puffed up with pride. Right. He wants to encourage unity yeah. in the body. So that's a, that's a lesson for us. In verse 19, but I will come to you shortly of the Lord will and will know not the speech of them who are puffed up, but the power. He said, when I come, if I come, yeah. if the Lord wills. Yeah. And that's so crucial because I'm guilty of making decisions without knowing whether it's the Lord's will. Yeah. Amen. I say that because we, we're so accustomed to doing things that we have learned on the fleshly side. We just carry forward because they seem so ordinary. They seem inconsequential, but it's significant that if you call yourself a servant, you don't make a decision to go back to Corinth on your own. He says, if the Lord wills. That means if the Lord is in your way, he will make your way for that to happen. Yeah. And say, then not only that, when I come back, it won't be all puffed up, but it'll be in power. Amen. I've learned some valuable lessons from that just last week or so. I, uh, I own some rental property. And uh, oftentimes, there are people that are not able to pay their rent on the first of the month. And my ordinary tendency is to say, well, maybe I'll just put an eviction notice up and do it. But I, I stopped for the first time. I'm going to tell you. It was a lesson. I, I stopped. I said, Lord, what's your week for, the, for me? 
and I held up on it, and there were two cases. And one case, the lady was out of town, and she had some problems, fix sickness in the family, and she couldn't reach me. She had a different phone number. But when she came back, she paid the rent. Yeah. All because I waited on the Lord. Yeah. And the second one said, I'm going to pay you such and such a date, and it never did come to pass. And ultimately, she called me, and she said that somebody had stolen her money out of a car. And first, it was hard to believe, and, and to be honest, I, I had some doubts, but I still waited. She said, my grandpa is going to come in and pay the rent. I said, okay, please have him get in touch with me today. He came in. Not only did he pay it, he paid it in cash. Amen. So I'm, I'm saying that to say this. You have to really trust him and ask him what his will is for you. I don't know. That is, if you're taking a trip. Now, I mean, we like to plan vacation. We like to do a lot of things. And we think that we are old enough. We know what we need, and we know what's best for us, and we know where it is that we're going. But I'm trying to tell you something special. you got to ask him. Paul, when it's in your way, he makes your way. When you ask him, he honors you with that. So ask him. You're a servant. You're not a master. He's the one that judges you in the end, not you yourself and not you, somebody else. But all he wants to see is for you to recognize that you are a servant. Amen. Don't make that decision on your own. I don't care if it's paying a bill and you don't wish no one to pay and your money is short. Ask him what to do. Yeah. I find that when faith is exhibited, God shows up and oftentimes he'll show out. Yeah. Yeah. I could tell you a story by the time that my wife and I had gone to Austin to, to get some federal funds to construct these rental units. And we were competing against cities, and we didn't have the best of proposal. We, we just started out, we didn't quite know what we were doing, but we put it out there anyway, by faith. And we went up there, and they were evaluating all the proposals. And while my wife was sitting in there in the conference room, I took a break, and I went to the men's room. And while I was there, I prayed. And then I went back, and... They made an announcement, these two black folks yeah. from Bryan College Station, and we got the money that was requested. Yeah. You just don't know how it made my day. And ever since I walked by faith, there have been people that say, you can't do this and you can't do that, but I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. Everything that the Lord has allowed me to do was by faith because I know he can do it. Yeah. Once he does something for you, you don't doubt him at any time. Don't doubt that you can't pull it off. Somebody's going to say, no, you can't get there. Yeah. You can't do it. But I'm telling you, you can. Because he's able. Yeah. Yeah. For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. Amen. You cares no power in the flesh. But there's power in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to Work at it every day. Amen. It's like, it's not just a, a once in a while kind of thing with it. If you're going to operate in the spirit, you, 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 it's just like a good friend. You need to talk to him every day. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because there's something about a link. Because, you see, we're at a stage that we're still in a, a stage where we got the habit and dominion of sin in our lives. Mm -hmm. And as you begin to talk more and more and you open yourself to the spirit, it'll teach you how to walk better. It'll teach you how to talk better. Amen. It'll teach you how not to get upset or anxious for anything, yeah. but to pray about it all. See what his will is for you in your life. It may seem odd because you practice not doing that for so long, but if you just be obedient, Lord. What is it that you want me to do on this situation? Yeah. And it's okay to admit I don't know because I really don't know. If you do know, you're leaning on some understanding that's probably the wrong understanding. Yeah. So it's important then that you get the facts. Just like I remember the old show called Dragnet. Man, Sergeant Joe Friday. 
he would be investigating something, and he would say, ma'am, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. That's what the Lord's going to tell you on that day. He said, we only going to give you the facts. There's no appeal from the lower courts. There's nothing coming up that's going to impact what I say. I've already got your facts right here. If you want to hear them, I can tell you all about them. But be ye mindful of that. Amen. Judge not that ye be judged. Amen. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod? Should I come heavy handed when I come back? If I come back? Amen. Or he says, in love, in the spirit of meekness, what is it you really prefer? He's going to do that anyhow. But it's important to note that whenever you're having those kind of issues and problems, whether it be in the church or any place, yes. to do everything in low, in love, and in meekness. Yes. We don't have all the answers. You don't know all the answers. And you don't really know enough to resolve that without guidance from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whenever you're having difficulty even with a child or with a relationship or anything. These are things that we need to, we need to open up and talk about. Yeah. And as I was talking last Sunday on, on Philippians, the book of Philippians, it said, be anxious for nothing. In other words, worry about nothing and pray about everything with things. If, and it, the word is everything. Yeah. I know we have a habit then of only lifting up to them those situations sometimes we get to the critical or most yes. needy at the time. Yes. But he said, I, I, I want to hear about your joys. Yes. I want to hear about your temptations. Yes. I want to hear about your difficulties that you have. Tell me all that's in your heart and says, when you tell him all that's in your heart, you unleash something called joy. Yes. And it's not temporarily, it's permanent. So you can serve and be joyful. All that other stuff that you left, that's gone. Because you let it go. You let go, let go, and let go. Yeah. That's why it's so important to do it. <coughs> it's love and meekness. Yeah. I want to thank you this morning for this lesson. I, I just, I'm letting go, but I, I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep early this morning because I hadn't finished preparing this right here. But, the Lord always rewards me when I prepare. Amen. Now, I don't sleep well. I don't eat well when I've got to do something for the Lord. I like to be just empty so he can fill me up in essence. Yeah. And so these pages this morning, I said to myself, I said, why do I go through this every single time? But I have learned, I have learned and that he does that for me. And why should I not prepare well? And I'm dedicated. You have to be dedicated. You have to be dedicated to him. And know that he is going to do what's best for you all the time. And every day if you let him, just ask him. But when you do, believe that he can and know that he can. And let it go. Now, if something is so critical that you think, well, what have I got to do it today? Uh-uh, no. See, that's, that's the problem. You, you got to wait on the Lord. The scripture tells you to wait on him. Yes, yes. Are you ready for what he is going to send forth? The spiritual blessing that you can access from the heavenly, you may not really be prepared to receive. And so the waiting could be a shade longer than what you anticipate. Amen. So you need to be mindful of that. Be ready at all times to receive it. Practice it. Make it a habit. Work on it every single day. I'm going to have a word of prayer. We'll close for today. Heavenly Father, it's uh, been a wonderful thing that you have uh, yes. continued to work on me to let go and let you have it. And uh, I thank you, Father, that you continue to honor me your spirit in my life yes. and that you would allow me to truly depend on you to, to say what does would be said. I haven't always done that, Lord. I've always had a little leaning to yeah. 
depending on what you allow me to use man's wisdom to prepare. But you show me right now, Father, and so many other times that it truly is foolishness. All we have to do is ask of thee, and I will provide. We thank the Father for the fellowship and friendship of so many, and we thank you this morning for this Sunday school class. And we pray, Heavenly Father God, that there was a blessing in it for everybody that's here and shouted my voice. Using all blessing, we pray in thy son's name. Amen, amen, and amen. amen.